Hey, how's it going? Amelia here and you're watching Newsbreak. The UK has paid a final farewell to Queen Elizabeth II with a state funeral and a military procession. Here's Amal to tell you how it went down. 2,000 guests, 4,500 military personnel and 4 billion people watching around the world. Queen Elizabeth II's state funeral was an event for the history books. Soul of Elizabeth, our late queen, in glory forever. Her funeral service went for about an hour with readings from political and religious leaders and ended with two minutes of silence across the UK. Her coffin was then taken on a procession to Wellington Arch. The whole thing involves a lot of formality and tradition. Everyone here is walking exactly 65 steps per minute. And Princess Charlotte even made sure her brother Prince George bowed at the right time. But the funeral still had a special Queen Elizabeth touch. The Queen loved her corgis, so royal officials took them out to watch the procession. Oh, and her pony Emma was also watching. So well behaved. Finally, the Queen arrived at St George's Chapel at Windsor Castle to be lowered to the royal vault and laid to rest. Most mighty and most excellent monarch, Elizabeth II. Last night, an estimated 4 billion people tuned into the Queen's funeral, making it the most watched broadcast in history. Here's Michelle. Screens in Piccadilly Circus were blacked out. The rest of the city was quiet as hundreds of thousands of people lined the streets or found a place to watch the funeral. It was a privilege to be able to come down and watch it. I think the hardest part for me, realising it was the last time I was going to salute her. That certainly brought a tear to my eye. It's just to see everybody come together and just stand and be a part of it and just the moments of silence was really, really uh, inspirational. Around the world, there were other tributes, like this one in Hong Kong. Like you've got the hospital, you've got schools, you've got, even got the real names that were just still under her name. And uh, I guess this is just a way that just to remind people of, the pre of her presence before the handover. In Paris, a metro station was renamed Elizabeth II just for the day of her funeral. And in Nepal, there was a Buddhist prayer ceremony. And here in Australia, lots of people tuned in from home. But others chose to share the moment. This is a moment in history. She's been a steadfast for the monarchy and she's the glue that kept them together. And she'll be missed. She meant a lot to me, yeah. Hurricane Fiona is causing big problems in parts of the Caribbean. The Category 1 storm has battered the Dominican Republic, bringing strong winds and heavy rains. It's already hit neighbouring Puerto Rico, causing an island-wide power blackout. Authorities say it could be days before power is restored to its 3 million residents. Now to some things that don't fly, but should. As a swan, Lance Buddy Franklin has achieved some pretty unbelievable things on the footy field. But can he fly? Almost. Sometimes. Luckily, he's just confirmed on social media he's staying on with Sydney in 2023 for one more year, making it his 10th season as a swan. The news comes in the lead-up to Buddy's sixth grand final on Saturday when Sydney takes on Geelong. Now, how do you get one very heavy passenger plane off the ground? Uh, well, probably not like this. But the aim of this unusual competition in the US is to pull this usually airborne vehicle forward as much as your team of 25 people can. Which doesn't seem to be too much, understandably. Nearly 100 teams took part to raise more than $3 million for charity. Now, these aircraft were built to fly. Well, uh, fly is maybe not the word. Glide, drop, nosedive. This is the Flugtag competition, where creative homemade planes are launched into a harbour, because why not? It was held in Taiwan for the first time and 42 teams attempted takeoff. The winner was this one, which managed 32.75 metres of airtime before uh, landing. <laughs> 